Hi everyone, I'm going to take you through a quick, informal tour of the Blood on the Clock Tower app, so you can run or play your first game. This will not be a tutorial on how to run Blood on the Clock Tower. The game's core rulebook already serves that purpose. I'll put a link to a PDF of it in the description for anyone who's interested. Once you've created an account at botc.app and logged in, this is what you'll see. These are all of the public games currently being played. It's important to note, however, that this is just a fraction of the total number of games currently being played online. The vast majority of these games are private and inaccessible to us from this menu. For this reason, the best way to get into a game of Clock Tower is to join some of its online communities, and I'll also put some relevant links in the video's description to those communities so you can go check them out. To create a game, click the big Create Game button here. We then have some options to choose from, such as what language the game will be played in and what server region it will use. The most important of these options is the session name, which is essentially the password your players are going to use to join the game. Once you're happy with the settings, go ahead and click Create Game. Alright, we've got a game going. These empty seats are where our players will eventually sit, but right now they're all empty. If we want to invite our players to join us, all we have to do is click this symbol in the top right corner of the screen and then bring up this options menu, which contains all of the settings that we've just selected. You can click this button here and it will copy a link to the game, which you can then paste to anyone you want to invite. All they have to do to join the game is click the link and it will bring them straight in. These three things up here are for your audio, your microphone and your webcam. Now, you can toggle these on and off, obviously. If you see, I, uh, I click the microphone and you can see my voice lighting up in the top left corner here. And if I click this webcam, you can see my face. Hello, that's me. Uh, I'll, I'll leave me on, shall I? Um, and then obviously you can mute this and you can remove this and all that jazz. But before you do any of that, you need to get it working. And it's probably best to learn the shortcuts now. You can press the Q key on your keyboard and it brings up the app settings. And the first thing you're going to want to do is go to chat and click the run the setup button just to make sure your microphone and your headphones and your webcam are all functioning correctly. If you click this, characters here, it'll bring up a list of characters. This is uh, the current most recent release script at the time of uh, creating this video. So you can click it once and it'll bring it partially out and you can click it a second time and it'll bring it fully out. This thing here is your night order for the first night of the game. Uh, so when you're running the game, when you go to the night phase for the first time, these will be uh, the various characters that you wake up in the order in which you wake them. And you can actually put little markers down next to the things that you need to do by clicking next to them, and then you can remove those as those players die or use their abilities. And the same thing goes for other knights here. Um, you, can, you can click and you can put things down and you can remove those things. Over on the left side of the screen, we've got... Voice. These are the various voice channels. So when players go to have private conversations with one another during the day phase, they can make use of these various channels. So if we jump into one now, let's jump into the cathedral. You'll see that all of these have gone dark, and I'm now in the cathedral over here. And my, my webcam uh, feed comes up. And you can actually click the webcam feed to make it large or small, which is good because later on in the game, you're going to have uh, probably a lot of various tokens here and you're going to have reminder tokens uh, coming out like this and these might get covered up by your webcam feed and you might want to click on them to make notes and whatnot so you can at any time minimize this and you can drag it around and put it wherever you want and this goes for for a lot of the stuff on on this app a lot of it is modular and a lot of it you can just drag around uh, to your heart's content if you wish to leave a private chat channel, you can do this at any time by clicking the leave room button there, or you can press backspace on your keyboard and it'll throw you back into the main room. This thing here is the text chat. This can be used to chat publicly, but it can also be used to chat privately with players. We don't have any players in right now, but if we did, uh, you would be able to uh, hit the enter key and select them in order to privately chat with them. This thing here is where you add Fabled, so as you can see right now, we've got a bootlegger and a gin. If you don't know what Fabled are, again, I would recommend you read the rulebook. Uh, it's also worth noting that all of these things that I'm showing you now are modular, so we can drag these Fabled out, and we can put them over here. 
And if you want this text chat permanently on screen, we can drag it over here and we can minimize it and maximize it and change its size. Uh, the same thing goes for the voice channels. If we want, we can put them over here. I generally prefer to keep all this stuff over here because it's just, it's, it's tidier uh, and, and they're easily accessible. The last of these is the bluffs. Uh, you will be giving you'll be giving three bluffs to your uh, to your demon, and you can make a note of these. And again, you can drag these around. I need to close some of these seats. We don't have twelve players, so if you press the one key on your keyboard, it will bring up a little interface here where you can uh, open and close seats. You can shuffle seats. You can clear all of them if you like. You can add more. So if we need, if we've got a bunch of people waiting to play, we can go all the way up to twenty if we want to. Or we can click the crosses here to remove the various extra seats that we no longer want. So let's knock us down to nine. There we go, nine seats left. And now let's say that our person in seat three uh, actually uh, wants to sit next to the person in seat one. And for some inexplicable reason, we've decided to honor that request. So uh, we can actually click this here and we can drag these around and swap seats with people. We're now ready to set up and run our first game. So we click the cog and we go onto the first tab and we go to select edition this is where we'll choose which edition of blood on the clock tower we're going to play we've got trouble brewing bad moon rising sex and violets or a custom script we also have down here the current release script for the latest character and we have the recommended custom script which at the moment is extension code if this is your first time running blood on the clock tower for the love of god please run trouble brewing uh, it doesn't matter how experienced you are as a GM or how much werewolf you've played or Town of Salem or Among Us. I really can't impress enough how important it is to run Trouble Brewing for your first game. There's a, there is a lot going on in this game. Uh, and really, you want to run this at least a dozen times before you start moving elsewhere. So for the, for the sake of that example, we'll select Trouble Brewing. And you'll see now that the list of characters has actually changed here to the ones on Trouble Brewing. So, we've got Trouble Brewing loaded and ready to go. Uh, but you know what? I don't really care for this background, so let's change it to a nice red background. There we go. We've got a nice red Trouble Brewing. All right. Now that we're satisfied with both the mechanics and the aesthetics, it's time to select some characters. Okay, jump cut. I realize that I can't actually show off some of the features of this app without having some people in the game to play. So, I've recruited eight friends to uh, pretend to play Blood on the Clock Tower with me. So... We are now ready to run our first game. We've got eight players. Uh, what do we do now? Well, we select some characters. So, uh, this thing here actually tells you what, what character types and how many of them uh, you should put in. It's worth noting that uh, some of these characters will modify that. So, for example, if we selected the Baron, who adds two outsiders, this little, uh, this little exclamation mark comes up uh, to let us know that there are characters selected that modify the game setup. And the same thing goes, uh, we can't actually select characters like the Drunk, whose token would, would never go in the bag. Once you're ready, once you're happy and satisfied with the characters that you've selected, you can click this button to pass them out, and it will randomly deal out these tokens. And you'll see that it also populates our night sheet for us here as well, which is pretty cool. We're not going to need that just yet, because first we've got to do some setup. So, you can place reminder tokens next to the main character tokens and you're going to want to do this because there is a lot to remember in this game for example the washerwoman's going to see one of two players uh, let's say that our washerwoman is going to see the monk so we'll place the townsfolk token next to jams and let's place the wrong token here so now we know which two players uh, the washerwoman is going to be shown at night similarly we need to select a red herring for our fortune teller so let's make the uh, empath a red herring and you're going to use these um, reminder tokens all throughout the game um, but there are a few that you have to do at setup so um, we're ready to go we're ready to run our first game we're ready to go to the first night and we press the n key and you can see that, first of all, we've got some little clouds rolling by. That's to let us know that it's a night phase. But you might also notice that everyone's webcam feeds have gone. You can only see everyone's avatars now. And that's because, obviously, uh, if you are going to communicate with your players at night, you, you don't want people to see their physical reactions. If this were a real in-person game of Blood on the Clock Tower, they'd all have their eyes closed. So... We're ready to run the night phase. We need to communicate with these players. There are two ways that you can do that. 
you can either communicate with them via microphone or you can use what we call the cards, which is what we would do if we were playing in person. Uh, I'm going to show you how both of these work. Generally speaking, the cards are fine, but you might find that you need to, uh, to verbally communicate with some players if they're a little confused about things. Um, using the cards is quite simple, so let's, uh, let's click our poisoner and click wake. And we need to tell the poisoner who the demon is. And if you click uh, this card here that says this is the demon, you'll see it actually automatically populates this. So it already says sincerity. Uh, and then we can click send. And now Lorinda knows that sincerity is the demon. Similarly, we can click uh, wake here. And we can click these are your minions and hit send. And it will tell sincerity that Lorinda is the minion. If we've got some bluff set up, which we probably should have done beforehand that was naughty of me uh but if we've got some bluffs here ready to go we can also click wake and click these characters are not in play and it will send the demon three bluffs as well uh, and you'll see that these are turning into thumbs thumb up thumbs up thumbs ups is that even a word is that the plural of thumbs up i don't know uh but lorinda's got a thumbs up uh because they've clicked got it and they've let us know uh that they've that they've received that information um now, we actually need some choices to be made. So, for example, we need Lorinda to uh, make a choice. They need to choose who they want to poison. So we can click make a choice and hit send. And while we're doing that, we might as well send the same thing to Malachi, our butler, who needs to pick someone. And we might as well send the same thing to Shade, our fortune teller. So we're now waiting on, uh, on these choices. Lorinda has chosen to poison Malachi. So we can put the reminder token there. Malachi's chosen for Shade to be their master in this case. But actually, Malachi's poisoned, so we're not going to put anything down. But for the sake of, of showing you how it works, that's what we would do. Uh, now let's say uh, we want to verbally tell Jaybro that zero of their living neighbours are evil. Um, you can hit the enter key. And you'll see that it brings up a bunch of symbols here. We've got uh, we've got we've got envelopes and we've got speech bubbles. Uh, now the envelopes will open up a private text chat with these players if we want to. Uh, uh, example, private chat, uh, and Shade will now be able to see that. Uh, but if you if you want to have a an audio audio conversation with someone, you can click the speech bubbles, and you'll see that. Uh, now, we're now in a private chat with Jaybro. Jaybro can't hear anything we're saying because I've got myself muted. Uh, but I could be going right now, Hey, Jaybro, zero of your living neighbours are evil. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and uh, and then when we're done having that communication, you can press backspace to leave the channel. It's important to note that um, nobody else can see this. So the other players can't see that we're in a private chat. They can't see that Jaybro's gone. Um, there's no way really for them to tell that any of this is happening. Oh look, Jaybro has requested a chat with us. So we can actually click this here and that will bring Jaybro back in. Thank you for doing that. I didn't even ask them to do that, but they've they've <laughs> they've given an example of part of this app. That was very handy. So uh yeah, here we are with Jaybro. We can now press the back space key and that will leave the chat. And Jaybro's left it as well. And it looks like we've got a response from Shade as well. Hi, there we go. So, uh, there are a few more things that we would have to do during this night phase if this were a real game. But for the sake of uh, expedience, uh, let's say that the whole of that night phase is done. And you can press the N key. Uh, and now we're in the day phase. And we'll say good morning to our players. And then they can go off and have their private chats. Which hopefully they're about to do by using the various voice channels here. The way private chats work for players is exactly the same as the way they work for... Um, for you, the storyteller. So you can see uh, these guys have, have got into the monastery. But if you want to create a completely private channel with someone that nobody else can enter, like Jams and Malaki have done here, you just press enter and you click these speech bubbles. You all might also notice that there are a few little um, envelope symbols flying between uh, various... Uh, tokens here. And that's actually the players using the private chat function. Uh, so you can see Shade has sent a message to Lorinda saying example neighbor whisper. So 
Shade can whisper to Lorinda and Shade can whisper to Jaybro because they're neighbours. And none of the other players can see that text at all. Uh, only the two people communicating can, can. But you can only you can only pl- privately whisper with your neighbours. You can't privately whisper across the circle. So, uh, these guys are all off having private chats, scheming, backstabbing one another. Uh, let's imagine we've given them a good five minutes or so to do this. And we are ready for them all to return back to the town square. What do we do? Well, if you press the R key on your keyboard, R for return, it will do this. And that that is to let everybody know that they should come back to the town square. And because these are good, conscientious players who behave themselves, they've immediately come back. And we're now in the nomination phase. Um, If I didn't have my audio muted, you would be able to hear these guys chatting. Let's say, for example, that chat leads to a position where jams says that they would like to nominate um, Sincerity. Well, what you'll do then is you'll click on Jams' token, you'll click Nominate Player, and then you'll select Sincerity. And you'll see these clock hands come up. And Jams will presumably accuse Sincerity of being evil and say Sincerity is the worst thing since unsliced bread. Uh, And then Sincerity will defend herself passionately because she's the demon and doesn't want to lose the game on day one. Once everyone's had their pound of flesh and had a good old chat about it, you just click this countdown button. And you'll see these hands go round. So, three votes is not enough uh, to, uh, to put Sincerity up for execution. But let's just imagine Sincerity got five. You can then click this button here to mark them. Uh, and that means that they are ready for execution. And you, you can keep doing more nominations if you like, but once the day is completed, uh, and if you've got someone ready to be executed, you can hover over the top of a token here to kill someone, put the night shroud down, execution happens, and we all go to the night phase. And that, folks, is a basic tour of the official app. Mm-hmm.